This one is the morning, it's the 20th of June, 2020, and this is the 44th session of the morning prayer. We are opening with the hymn number 52, and after that we will take hymn number 152. And the theme of this morning devotion is seeking for help from wrong persons and their places. Now, In number 52, be ye not to temptation. Be ye not to temptation. Oh, ye be in the same. Each victory we have you. Some others to win. Fight a man for Look ever to Jesus, he will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you, come for strength and keep you. Trusting God wherever I may be, or from the land or on the rolling stone, or come what may from day to day, my heavenly Father washes over me. I trust in God, I know He cares for me on mountain bleak. Or on the stormy sea, though below's roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly Father washes over me. He makes the rose an object of his care. 
He guides the eagle through the pathless air. And surely he remembers me. My heavenly Father washes over me. I trust in God. I know he cares for me. On mountain bleak or on the stormy sea. Though billows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly Father washes over me. I trust in God, for in the lion's den, on battlefield or in the prison pen, through praise of blame, through flood of flame, my heavenly Father washes over me. I trust in God, I know He cares for me. On mountain bleak, or on the stormy sea, the billows roll, He keeps my soul. My heavenly Father washes over me. The valley may be dark, the shadows deep, but to the shepherd does his lonely sheep, and through the gloom He lead me home. My heavenly Father watches over me. I trust in God. I know He cares for me. On mountain bleak, on the stormy sea, though billows roll, He keeps my soul. My heavenly Father watches over me. We want to come before the Lord this morning once again, not as a formality, but to appreciate God because of uh, His goodness unto us. And I want to ask, has God been good to you? The answer is yes. God is good to you. God is good to me. If it is not the Lord, uh, you wouldn't have seen another day. You wouldn't have even lived up until today. So. We want to appreciate God for His mercy, His love, His care, His kindness. He's uh, been a father to us, a father that uh, never fails, a father that cares so much, a father that uh, loves us, and He gave His only begotten Son, a father whose eyes are run through and through throughout the universe on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards Him so He can show Himself strong. So to him we have come again this morning, so that we can uh, drink from him, so that we can fellowship with him, so that we can be fortified in his presence. I have a father that will never, never fail me. I have a father that will never, never fail me. Jesus is my father, he will never, never fail me. Rock of ages, never, never. Hallelujah. I have a father, he never, never failed me. I have a father, he will never, never fail me. Jesus is a father, never, never fail me. Rock of ages, never, never fail. And so, Lord, this morning, I want to appreciate you because you are good to me, you are good to the church, you are good to all, you are good to every one of us that have been in this uh, prayer session, this prayer uh, period with uh, us, Lord in glory. The testimonies, is, uh, the testimonies are getting to us of uh, your interventions, your deliverances, your visitation, and uh, uh, so many good things, great Father, you have done, including bringing us to a new day. We want to thank you, our God and our Father. We want to bless you, we want to appreciate you, we want to say thank you, blessed Redeemer. This morning, my Father and my God, I want to say frankly that uh, 
I lack an uh, appropriate word to convey the gratitude of my heart unto the Lord for how you have kept my own family, how you have kept my children, both those of them that are with me and those that are not with me. In the meanwhile, blessed Redeemer, I want to thank you because of how you have kept all the members of the church, their families, their children, husbands and wives and uh, their work and uh, everything now you have preserved our families at this period we thank you we bless you thank you another time again we want to also appreciate you great father because of this morning refreshing that uh, you have given us grace that every morning blessed father we have been meeting every morning morning by morning with god morning with god is the greatest morning morning with the holy spirit morning with uh, the Father, morning with the Trinity. Every morning, great Father, we rise to meet with the Trinity. What a wonderful, what a wonderful opportunity. What a wonderful thing. Lodondum, Odonadia, Librado, Sokaka, Italatoma, Masanjeni, Vilikri, Lamahanda, Lopa, Tenina, Resia, Ladum, Vania gradoma in sicle da bo, so riga gentili di de atua, praskili da atua, my dear, my father, it is marvelous that we meet with the Lord every morning, great father. And from the presence of the Lord, we will take off. From the presence of the Lord, we will take off to our businesses. From the presence of God, we will take off to the places of our work. From the presence of God, my Father and my God, we will move out. From the presence of God, we begin the day. Great Father, like Moses, one year grow upon in La Susuri, the depart to Alice, she, no zoom fini grima atena luas mate. My Father, there is nothing, my Father, greater than this opportunity to be with God every morning, my Father, and from the presence of God to move out. And then and God moving out with us. We thank you, we bless you, we glorify your name, we appreciate you so much. And this day, great Father, we thank you as we start the day with the word of God. When we begin the day with the word of God, we now take control of the world. We command authority, we go with goodness, we go with assurance, we subdue the enemy, we go with understanding. Great Father, our feet are directed. Great Father, we go on with the light of the word of God. We go with understanding. We go with the inspiration that comes from the light. Thank you, blessed Father. I want to say to the Lord of glory, thank you because of the grace that has set every one of us that every day we start with the Trinity, we start with the Word of God, we start with the Holy Spirit, we start with the Father, and we start with, with fellowship with one another. Great Father, I want to thank you because these are days of victory. These are days of seeing what we never saw. These are days of experiencing the right hand of God. And I bless you, eternal Father, because much things will soon be accomplished, even by the Lord of glory, by what he has ordained. Thank you, my Father, for answer. Glory be to God, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, once again, the theme of this morning, devotion is uh, seeking for help from wrong places and wrong persons. In other words, seeking for help where you can't get help. Seeking for help from where rather than getting help, the person gets help. Uh, uh, into trouble in Isaiah chapter let us go to Isaiah chapter 30 and uh, uh, from verse 1 Isaiah chapter 30 we will take a few verses from there woe to the rebellious children says the Lord that take counsel but not of me and that cover with a covering but not of my spirit that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to toss in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the toss in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Hanes. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them nor be and have no profit, but a shame and also a reproach. 
now verse uh, verse uh, uh, 6 the body of the peace of the south into the land of trouble and anguish from whence come the young and old lion the viper and fiery, uh, fiery flying serpent they will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them for the egyptians shall help in them and to no purpose therefore have i cried concerning this their strength is to sit still so in verse chapter 31 chapter 31 and uh, let us read from verse 1 to verse 4. woe to them that go down to egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong but they look not unto the Holy One of the Israel, neither seek the Lord, he, or yet he also is wise, and will bring evil, and will not call back his words. But will arise against the house of evil doers, and against the help of them that walk in iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men, and not God, and their horses flesh, and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down and they all shall fail together and so uh, this is talking about uh, uh, seeking for help from wrong persons and places and the natural tendency in man is that man will always seek for help from human beings from human sources from uh, human places of uh, of uh, seeking for help that is why in Second Kings chapter five and one to four ten, when uh, uh, Naaman was advised by the young girl, young Israeli girl, that they should seek for help from the prophet in Israel, instead of going to the prophet in Samaria, they had to go to the king. They had to go to the king to seek for help from the king, um, which is a very wrong step. And then in Second King chapter six, let us see uh, another occasion where people supposed to seek help from God, and instead of seeking help from God, they go to they went to seek help. The woman went to seek help from uh, from uh, the king, and the king said, "No, I cannot help you. Help can only come from God, and uh, uh, help can only come from people that are connected to God. They are the people that can link you to God, who is always the source of help of his people. In Second King chapter 6, and let's read verse 25. And there was a great famine in Samaria, like it is now everywhere. And behold, they besieged it until an ass head was sold for four score pieces of silver, and the fourth part of a cup of one's of dope's dunk for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried the woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king, hear the response of the king that this woman cried to. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee out of the barn floor or out of the wide press? Where am I going to get help to help you? So I can help you. Help can only come from God and God is ever ready and God is ever willing to help. Unfortunately, men have this natural tendency to seek for help from human beings, to seek for help from human sources, to seek for help from human places. Now, but the word of God is clear from what we read in Isaiah that seeking for help from man is uh, putting oneself into more trouble in Jeremiah chapter 7 and let us read verse 5. For thus says Jeremiah 17, please. Jeremiah 17 and verse 5. Thus says the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted a man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. This is clear. A man who is uh, trusting a man is uh, drawing a cost to himself. A man who is making the flesh his hand 
and is at the past departed from God. That person is uh, drawing trouble to himself. Verse 6. For he shall be this man that he trusts is a man who is seeking for help from man. He be like the heat in the desert and shall not see when good cometh. But shall he have the past places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited. That is because of uh, seeking for help from where help cannot come. Verse 7. But look at the man. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For this man that trusts in the Lord and seeks help from the Lord, he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when it cometh. For her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. That is the truth. That is the word of God. So don't allow the heart that is desperately uh, wicked and uh, deceitful uh, that uh, it, should, uh, it should mislead you into uh, seeking help from man because the Bible has made it clear that help of man is vain. Psalm chapter 20 and verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we uh, we remember the name of the Lord our God. Some of us know uh, how people have given us uh, false promises, false hope, and uh, that they will uh, assist in bring, making, giving you promotions. They will assist in this and assist in that, but that is just simply deceit. So don't put your trust in any man because there is no help coming from man. You have to put your trust in God. Now, when you put your trust in God, He can now influence whosoever He wants to influence to help you. Now, in verse 8 of Psalm 118, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes, elect men who are in high position. God said it is better to trust in God than to put trust in man. No matter how highly placed that man may be, don't put trust in a man. If that is why many people are, 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 are yet to come out of their troubles because they are putting all their trust and confidence in man. In Psalm 146, and let us read from verse 3. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. Princes of old uh, make things to happen. Princes of old, they, before you get to the king, you get through them, and they will pro they promise you heaven and earth and all that. But the Lord said, no, don't put trust in princes. Don't even put trust in kings. Put your trust in me because the help of man is vain. Verse 4. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his head. In that very day, his thoughts, his plans, his promises, all of them perish. Happy is that man, he that had the God of Jacob for his help whose hope, whose trust, whose confidence is in the Lord his God. This God which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that there is, which keepeth truth forever, uh, which executed judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord loseth the prisoners, the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind, the Lord raiseth them that are bowed down, the Lord loveth righteousness, the Lord preserveth the strangers, he relieveth the fatherless and widow, but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God of Zion. Unto all generation, praise the Lord. How can you leave this God that can reign forever? And you are trusting man that he dies, his bread goes out of him, and the day he dies, his plan for you, his promises to you, all of them will fail along with him. So God is the helper of his people. He has said that we help you. God is the helper that is in Zion. 
He has promised to help you. I, and the from whence cometh our help, Psalm 121 and verse 1 and 2. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let's read. I lift up my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Now, God who made heaven and earth can help you. Now, he didn't need any person to help him when he made the heaven and earth. So, in verse 20, in verse 2 rather, of chapter 20 of Psalm. Please, can we go and read? I want you to take note of this too, so that today, and uh, after today, you don't look to man. You look to God. You now see the need of uh, coming every day to God because you know that that is from where you get help. If you didn't get help from God and you go out that day, you will not get any help. If uh, you did not get what you are looking for, every morning from the Lord and you go out you will, that day is already wasted. You will get it from God before you now can go and get it from men. You get the sales from God before the customers can now come. You get the promotion from God before you can get the promotion from men. You get the work from God, the job from God, the employment from God before you can get it from man. God can now use man to get it to you. You get the promotion from God. You get the favor from God before you now begin to now get it from man. But if you now put God by the side and you are using the connections you have. Now listen to me. For, for many, many years it has been connection, connection. They connect you to this. They connect you to that. They connect you to Mr. B. They connect you to Mr. A. And you know that all of those connections have gotten you to nowhere. Every day you go out, connection, meetings to meetings, and then and you spend hours meeting with men. But then you don't spend hours meeting with God. Who will be able to direct your steps? Psalm 20 and verse 2. Send thee help from the sanctuary, and strengthen thee out of Zion. Verse 1. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the Lord God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from sanctuary. So if help does not come from sanctuary, if God did not send it from the sanctuary, if you did not get it from the presence of God, you can't get it that day. So any day you move out from the presence, you move out from your house, and you did not get anything in the morning meetings with God, in the morning uh, uh, discourse with God, morning uh, fellowship with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and you didn't get it that day, and you go out, I can tell you that you cannot get it from outside. You cannot get it from the market. You get it from the Lord before you can get it from the market. And so in Psalm 124 and verse 8, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Help in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And Psalm 60 and verse 11, Psalm chapter 60, verse 11. So cease to trust in the sons of men. Cease to trust in your strength. Cease to trust in what you know. Now depend on God. After you have settled it with God, you can now go and then and go to talk to the men. Now listen to me. The sustenance that Elijah enjoyed was gotten first before Elijah went to talk to the woman. If Elijah did not get the woman to sustain him from God and went out and began to talk to every person he saw on the street, he will get himself disappointed. So God said, go to so 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 place, I have commanded her to sustain you. So get it first from God and then you can now get it from men easily. In Psalm 60, verse 11, give us help from trouble, for then is the help of man. Give us help from trouble, for then is the help of man. Also, Psalm 46, 1 to 5, you read it, you will see that God is not only there to help you, but it's a present help. It's a help that is ever present. God is our refuge. And strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm 46, verse 1, verse 2 now. 
Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, and all of those things begin to happen. We will not be moved because our present help is there with us. So when Naaman was directed, as I earlier said to us, to go to the prophet of God in Samaria, rather than going to the prophet of God, he went to the king. A letter was given to him to go to the king. Now, people miss their helpers and miss help coming from God because they look to wrong places. They trust in wrong persons. They, they seek help from, from where they, they look on size, human appearance, before they seek for their help. Now, when, when Philip went to uh, uh, his city and met Nathaniel and was preaching to him, Nathaniel said, can any good thing come from uh, Nazareth? Can any good thing come from Galilee? Is there any good thing that can come from this place? He was considering physical things. Man will always look at the outward things. Man will always look at outward appearance. Even the prophet merely anoint a wrong person, if not for God's intervention. Because of this tendency of looking at uh, the physical. Now in John chapter 1 and verse 45, Philip find Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law, and the prophet did write Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And on hearing that, Nathaniel said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Nazareth is a small city. Can any good thing come out of it? But of course you know that that is where the good thing comes from. So now the, the, the man, Neman, went to meet the king. King wrote a letter to the king. And then they went to the king and nothing came out of it until he, the Elijah, Elisha had it and said, can you bring him so that he will come and know that there is a God in Israel. But then Elijah was sent to a widow woman, a poor widow woman. He didn't bother. He didn't bother about uh, the situation he met on ground. He didn't bother about uh, the fact that the woman had only one meal. God has sent him to the woman, and to the woman he went, and then announced it, and then she, he, he, the woman, and her child were all sustained by that. So it is not a matter of uh, the size. It is not a matter of the outward appearance. It is not a matter of what you see. It is a matter of uh, who has God appointed to help you. If you did not go to the place appointed for your help, if you did not go to the person appointed to help you, and you are seeking for help from wrong places, you will not get help. Uh, uh, Naaman nearly missed his help because he went to the wrong place. The woman that was crying to the king did not get help from the king because she looked to a wrong place. In First King chapter 17, and let's read verse 10, verse 9, Arise, get thee to Zarephath. First King 17, verse 9. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon, and they were there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there, gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her, and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord your God liveth, I have no, not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a, a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me, and my son, that we may eat and die. And Elijah said to her, Go, do what I ask you to do. And then I made a declaration. Now, when Elijah was sent to this widow woman, he did not ask why sending me to the widow. And when, of course, you know there are widows that are wealthy and all that, 
and then uh, uh, July so unfortunately, unfortunately it was to a poor widow and then he didn't ask God questions because he had to go to where God sent him to go. So, and that was where he got the help when God said, go to uh, the Brook Church. He went to Brook Church. Brook Kedron was closer, but then he had to go to Brook Church. That was, that was a father because that was where God directed him. So, now if he did not get that direction from God or from where he would get the help, and then I just went out, he wouldn't have gotten a help. So, the simplicity of God sent helpers sometimes may make people take the sources of their help for granted, thereby missing the opportunity. Sometimes God will send you a helper to you, and that helper may look so simple, may look as if a help cannot come from him or come from her. Now, don't neglect help, uh, helpers that God sent to you. If you neglect them, you will never, if you bypass them, to go to where you think. If you, if you move out from the place where you, you think, where, you, where God has sent you to help you, to a place where, he, for you, all the things you see around, all the things that are on ground, appear that this is where your help will come from you will ever miss your help. So, this is it. When, when Saul was uh, sent, was looking for Samuel, or meeting Samuel, he didn't recognize that this was the prophet we were talking about. He met him and said, we are looking for a seer. And Samuel said, I am he. And if there was anything very special, anything very significant, anything wonderful, Anything that uh, made him to look so different from other persons, anything that made him to look so different from other people, uh, Saul would have known that this is the man that they call the prophet. But he didn't know because there was nothing too special to make him think that this is the prophet. So he went to him and asked him, that is one in verse Samuel chapter 9, and 18 to 20, let's read it, so that... Uh, you, God may send you to a place to help you or to a person to help you and, uh, and that you should listen to the person and you should follow instructions and you should do what you ask to do but then maybe because of uh, some certain things, some shortfalls, some this and that, uh, I'm not talking about sin but human shortfalls, you now begin to look down on that and then I'm there by you miss your helper, you miss your help from the helper who then by God. In 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 18, 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 18 to 20, then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. He met Samuel, where the seer's house is, is. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for you shall eat with me today. And tomorrow I will let thee go, and will tell thee all that is in thy heart. As for thy asses that were lost three days ago, set not your mind on them. For they are found, and on whom is all the desire of Israel, is it not on thee, and on all thy father's house? Can you see that if there was anything special, if there were hosts of uh, people, bodyguard following somewhere, um, the people would have known that this is uh, the prophet. Saul would have known that this is the prophet, but there was no fanfare. You can see simplicity. Praise God. Simplicity. So don't do because of the simplicity that is in Christ, simplicity that is in the ministers of God sent to minister unto you. Don't because of simplicity in the man that God has appointed to minister to you, to help you. Don't do because of that and miss the opportunity. Now those who seek help from the hands of prophets who have no testimony or being born again or encounter with God, they may be patronizing agents of Satan. So you must be very careful so that you don't fall a victim into the hand of prophets of uh, Baal. In As of Apostle chapter 16, there was uh, this woman, and uh, 
this girl rather, and the girl was uh, a seer, and uh, but uh, they were using uh, using some good, using some spirit in some in the Acts of Apostles, please, chapter sixteen and verse sixteen. Acts of Apostles sixteen sixteen. Chapter 16 and verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination. They were using divination methods, which brought the uh, masters much gain by soothsaying. So there are many soothsayers today. If you, because of uh, seeking for help indiscriminately without being careful, you may end up at the hands of soothsayers. You may end up at the hands of uh, soothsaying men and soothsaying women that the devils are put there. In chapter uh, 13 of uh, As of Apostle, and let us read from verse uh, 4. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed by the, uh, unto Seleucia, and from then they came to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. When they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, uh, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was uh, by Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul, and desired to hear the word of God. But earlier mass, the sorcerer fall, so is his name, by interpretation, which to them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him, and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, we thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord. And so as and spoke uh, 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 and placed a punishment upon him, and he was punished because he was using soothsaying spirit. We have many soothsayers today that are feed the, the, the church and they are operating praying houses, prophetic ministries, prophetic houses here and there. So you must be very careful about those who you send prayer requests to about those who you connect to, about those who you pray with, so that you don't get yourself enmeshed into what uh, you have difficulty in getting yourself out of it later. Now, because of the existence of uh, many false prophets and miracle workers and prayer merchants, one will be very careful about uh, those he sends prayer requests to and uh, and uh, those who we, we, uh, submit to their prayers. So this is uh, what is obtained today. There are many false miracle workers. If you, they were there in the days of Moses in Exodus chapter 7, verse 9 to 12. You see them on prayer. And then in the, the Revelation chapter 13, and 10 to 18, and chapter 16, 10 and 14, and chapter 19, 20. We are told that the time is coming when the fourth prophets will do many wonders, many miracles, and multitudes of people will be falling headlong, even in such of such places, and following such people. And we have many of them today that are so much miracle workers, and they have a lot of money to share, they have a lot of money to distribute, they have a lot of cars and a lot of things to, to dish out to people, and this and that, well, you know that in Acts of Apostles chapter 16, the girl that was using spirit of divination, she was making a lot of money, making a lot of gain, making a lot of uh, things for her owners. So don't, uh, don't uh, fall victim, don't be a victim, don't uh, become, don't uh, get entrapped in the plans of uh, in the traps of uh, such people that uh, feed everywhere today, running uh, prayer houses, we can call them prayer merchants, and uh, prayer merchants in the sense that uh, they want to pray for you, then so, so, so amount of money must be given for you, so seed for this and that. Now in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, 8 and 9, 
And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the dryness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the walking of Satan, with all, uh, with all power, and signs and lying wonders. Walking of Satan with all power, and with all signs, and with all lying wonders. Somebody doing miracles, but the miracles was by the miracles were by the power of the devil. So that's what the word of God tells us. So you may end up in trouble more than you envisage, more than you bargain from those people that are making so-called prayer requests, giving you prophecy and this and that. We have many people that have ruined their lives, ruined their families, destroyed their homes because of uh, patronizing prophets here and there and prayer merchants and uh, anointed with this oil and that oil and this and that. So I want us to pray and uh, pray, let us pray for God's protection from these agents of the devil and wisdom to avoid these men and women who are working for the devil and who are working for their belly. Let us pray. This morning, our God, we thank you because you have made it clear that people can go to seek help from wrong places, from wrong persons. We find it in the days of Elisha. We find it that Isaiah warned and said, Woe to the people who do so. They will be seeking for help or they will get into more trouble. There is what they say, wait and see, they will receive. They give you head and they take heads. Great Father, they are giving you so-called miracles. And then what they are taking from you is, uh, is more than the miracles. Blessed Father, many people are being hypnotized. Many people, Great Father, have come under terrible demonic influence, my Father. So many people are being wrecked, financially wrecked. Their families wrecked, my father. Their marriage is broken. Their children wrecked. Some of them have even been raped and messed up by these so-called prophets and prophetesses, my father and my God. Was it not this other day, eternal father in heaven, that this in Lagos of Nigeria, some people went to go, went to the went to the beach, blessed father, for prayer, burning candle, they didn't know that, uh, that uh, there was spillage or it went spill in the water and in their lighting the candle, both the prophet and the people were all consumed. My Father and my God, I pray dear Lord in glory that you help all of us, every person that is uh, praying with me this morning. And those who in time to come may join us, great father, and we go into this prayer, and every watchman, my father and my God, that is in the diocese and beyond this diocese, all the places, that every one of us, great father, will be very careful so that we don't end victims, we don't end at the hands of the false prophets, at the hands of the those who come around us in sheep clothing, but in what they are ravenous bed. My Father, because it is predicted that this will abound, so give us grace and help, because help, then is the help of man. I want to pray, dear Lord, in glory, that every person, Lord, will set his mind and confidence and trust in the God who made the heavens and earth. Blessed Father, the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and constantly declare about God being his help, and that he will not trust his flesh. He will not trust man. He will not trust princes. He will not trust in his hand. He will trust in the Lord. My Father, I pray that every one of us will trust in the Lord who can help us. Thank you, Father, for answer. In the name of Jesus. Amen. One thing that makes people to go to wrong places is pride. Another thing is arrogance and high-mindedness. When people are proud, when people are arrogant, when people are high-minded, you find that God may direct them to a place, or they come to such places like Washman Catholic Charismatic Movement, 
where you find the humble men and women, and then where you find people that are very, very simple, they are not sophisticated in their, in their speaking of grammar and all of those things. Now you know that that can make somebody to now neglect the place that God has sent him or sent her. Now we want to lift up our voice and let us pray against the spirit of pride, arrogance, and high-mindedness that have prevented many people that God sent, but prevented many people from coming to the place where God has prepared for a, a help for them. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you this morning because you are Almighty God. Now these three things are lifted up. They play a, 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 a terrible role in preventing men from experiencing and getting help. Look at Naaman. Naaman was sent to the prophet, and the prophet said, Go deep yourself seven times. And he said, Ah, go deep myself seven times in, in Jordan. It's not uh, Abna and Bamfa. Are there the river, the waters in in my land? Are they not better than the, than this one? Now he was very pompous. He was very proud. Now he was also sent to the king because big man talks to big man. Elite talks to elite. elite. Academician talks to other academician. Trader should talk to trader. Why should I associate with these people that are not uh, speaking Queen's English? My father and my God, it's not about the matter of Queen's English, it is about whom God has sent you to, from where we come from. Elusu preteni angeli gruso ma anteni dile pratas ma andua. Magundum for ten years, Bresali agredo ma anteni dile. My father, I want to ask you, dear Lord in glory, let nobody this time miss helpers that have been raised. Let no person miss the place of help. I pray everlasting Father against the spirit of pride, arrogance, and, and haughtiness, and high-mindedness. Oh Lord in glory, give the people humble spirit so that they can get their help. It was when Naaman decided to humble himself that the help came. And when Nathaniel decided to humble himself and let us go to that Nazareth, and then and he met Jesus, and Jesus said, An Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. And then and the man was shocked. My Father and my God, I pray you, blessed Father, whatsoever eternal Father that has been, been responsible for people missing help sent from God for them, or help us that God have raised, Lord in glory, I pray that the Holy Spirit will deliver us from all such spirits. Thank you, Father. Go ahead and help us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the song we, we sang, Ask the Lord to help you. We are going to ask God to help you. We are going to ask God for, for help for your, you, for your family, and for the church. Because then is the help of man. God help me. You know the area you need help in your Christian life. You know your children that you need God to help. Some things you have been battling in your life, and uh, uh, some things uh, that uh, you have been battling with those children, but then you find that this is so difficult. It could be that among your children, one of them is having, having a stubborn spirit, or one of them is being consumed by a spirit of worldliness, one of them is uh, very, very stubborn. The things of God do not interest him or interest her. And it has been a concern. Now bring that concern before God. Whatsoever, any area you want God to help, let us pray. Eternal Father in heaven, I want to thank you because there is no any other place from where our help comes from. Our help is only coming from the Lord who made the heavens and earth. And the fact that you made the heavens and earth, Lord, is an assurance that you can help us. The fact that you stretch the heavens like cotton is, uh, is an assurance of God who stretched the heavens like cotton without sweating. God who divided the Red Sea. God who did all he did of old. My Father, what can you not do? God who helped uh, David against the strong. God who helped uh, Abraham and uh, helped Israel in their journey 
from the land of Egypt to the land of promise, dividing the Red Sea, bringing down the wall and carrying them through the terrible wilderness, a wilderness that no man has ever passed through, yet you have them. What can this God not do? I want to thank you, blessed Father, because destiny that is committed into your hand is secure. We present all of these children that are given headache to the families into your hand. We present all the cases that are unsettling the minds of the families. Grandfather, we present all the cases, eternal father, that appear to be very, very stubborn, my father and my God, appear to have mesmerized the families and then and contradict the word of God and uh, imposing a threat to their faith and, uh, and, and a kind of uh, a source of leakages to their conviction about you, my father and my God, whether they be here or uh, in this place or beyond this place, I bring all of this matter before you. Eternal Father, I present all of your children in India, Great Father, all of them into your hand. And whosoever among them that has case like this, Lord, that is a source of discouragement from time to time, you will rise to deal with the matter. I present your sons and daughters, Eternal Father, in heaven, in Cyprus, into your hand and all the blessings, my father, beyond the shore in the United States, UK, my father, in Canada, in African countries, in Asian, Asian continents, my father and my God, and in the northern Nigeria and the entire nation of Nigeria, all the people that are connected and we are praying, and there are some issues in their lives, everlasting father, that has, uh, that has, uh, that has uh, withstood the word of God, my father, that has, uh, that have, that has uh, stood against uh, every medication and stood against every of the effort, my father and my God, mesmerizing them, oh Lord in glory, such matters I present before you, asking the Lord of glory, who, who made the heavens and earth to touch them out of the way, so that we can move on and move forward. I bless you because you've answered, in Jesus' name, Amen. We're going to pray for the, to the Lord to help our pastors or the pastors of the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, beginning with uh, the diocesan pastors, the district pastors, the parish pastors, house leaders, and all the workers and all the people that are handling our equipment all the people in the studio and the electrical department and the all departmental heads of the watchman including people that are in charge of working in the offices of the watchman uh, in the abuja here and uh, in the headquarters and the uh, nationwide and uh, everywhere let's bring them before the lord they are uh, they are servants of god eternal father we thank you this morning want to bless you because of these men of God and women of God that have uh, donated their lives and they are serving the Lord, serving God, they have sacrificed themselves, they have made themselves, Lord, a living sacrifice unto God, the diocesan pastors, my father and my God, district pastors, parish pastors, house fellowship leaders and evangelism team leaders and full of workers, uh, leaders and uh, Every person, my Father and my God, including those that are in our school over there, and those in the headquarters, and those that are in the working in the diocesan headquarters, blessed Father, giving their services with a mega salary they are receiving, my Father and my God, I bring every one of them, my Father, to the Lord of glory, and I am asking, O oh God in heaven, that you will help them, you help all of us, Many, many of us, great father, many, many of them have had financial need, many have health issues and the other issues, marital issues, issues in their homes and uh, this and that. You know all of this because these are your servants, my father and my God. And if Jesus, uh, if Jesus took care of another man's servant, then what will he not do to his own servant? Blessed Redeemer, and I cannot believe that the centurion will be more careful about his useful servant than Jesus. Therefore, blessed Father, look at all of these your servants that are ministering to you in various places. 
and please attend unto their matters in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to ask help from God for your biological brothers and sisters, uncles, aunts, and uh, uh, cousins and nephews. And in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 4, uh, Joshua gathered the people to ask help of the Lord. Let us pray and ask help of the Lord for these your biological brothers and sisters, biological children, and uh, your wife, your husband, if you have, and if you have wife, let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. I want to bring my biological brothers and sisters, uncles and cousins, and uh, aunties, every one of them into your hand, nephews, all of them before the Lord of glory. I know you are interested in the souls of these people. I bring even their children, O oh Lord, into your hand. All of them into the hand of the Lord, including my, my brother-in-law, brothers-in-law, their wives and children every one of them, bring before the Lord of glory. And I present the Father of Father in heaven with the people, the people that bring him before the Lord. I lend my voice, the Father of Father in glory, asking the Lord of glory to hear us and the first thing, grant salvation to these people, salvation from sin and salvation from suffering and sickness and satanic and demonic attack and every influence of the powers of darkness. My Father, grant them salvation in any every area of their lives. Let them test what we have test. Let them test the goodness of the Lord, that they may know that God is good. I thank you because I know you bad us. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to pray for our close relatives that are trapped in occultism, idolatry, worship of devils, and we're going to pray against the activities of kidnappers, rapists, racialists, and uh, armed robbers that are feed everywhere, full of any headers, and the uh, bandits that are in the increase that the Lord should keep his people. Pray for your close relatives that are taken captive in occultism. Everlasting Father, we thank you and we bless your name as we present these two cases before the Lord. Our close relatives that have been trapped by occultism, idolatry, worship of the devils. You know them. They patronize native doctors. Some of them are even native doctors themselves. My father, we bring them before you this morning asking the Lord, send deliverance to them in the name of Jesus. Now this matter that has become a national issue, even global issue, terrorism, kidnappers, rapists, racialists, armed robbery, and all the activities of the Fulani headers, my father, and banditry that are feed everywhere, we bring them before the Lord asking God, you will execute judgment against them and those behind them. My father, they are sponsors. You will bring them to book. Now, but I'm asking you to keep your people, deliver your people from the traps in the name of Jesus. Finally, before we take the prayer request we have here, I'm going to ask the Lord today to guide your steps, guide your feet in all you do, and if there is any matter that has been disturbing you, marital matter disturbing you, program you have, and it looks like uh, there is no way it is going to be possible, those of you that are students and those of you whatsoever that uh, is being a disturbance to you, whatsoever that is being a concern to you, that uh, we have not been able all these days to bring before the Lord, I want you to bring them before God this morning as you ask God to guide you today and keep your steps in all you do. Eternal Father, we thank you this morning 
I want to join my voice with uh, this, your children, my God and my Father that are troubled. You know the trouble, you know what is uh, the matter that appears to be unsurmountable. You know the matter, especially those of them great father, that uh, their wives are walked out from them and have gone to marry and they are not bothered and they have tied these brothers down. And those of them that their husbands have walked out and then have gone to marry and tied these sisters down. Blessed Father, all of such people, I look up to God of heaven on their behalf. And I tie their matter to the Lord. And I want to say, Lord, in glory, you have to do something. Our eyes are on you. You cannot keep quiet. And then, and keep this, you are children, and allow these wicked people, these people that we can call agents of the devil that walked into their lives and wants to and want to destroy them to go scot free. Blessed Redeemer, I bring all of them before the Lord and I want to say, Lord, either you force them to return or you, they, you know what to do because the people have to move forward. This is my prayer and I want to thank you because you are God Almighty. You are concerned about the well-being of your people my father there is uh, nothing any man can do except god so in these cases that uh, there is nothing we can do as human beings we bring you into the matters because uh, you have handled such cases before we're not introducing you to something new this is what area uh, you know very well You've been able to deliver your people that when Israel came to the crossroad, when they came to the Red Sea, they didn't know what to do, but you put a way in the high sea. You made a way in the desert. When they ran into trouble, you followed them and they were fed. They were thoroughly fed. They had drink enough. My father, thank you. Now you will see us too. We put our trust in you. You will carry your people too. Glory be to God. Thank you, my father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We are commanded to pray for one another. Now we want to bring these people before God. Now somebody has written, my sister's marriage is seven years with three kids, but her husband abandoned her when she was three months pregnant for the last baby. He wants us to pray uh, that uh, uh, the Lord will intervene. The Lord will intervene. He has also been sending my sister text wishing her dead. He no longer goes to church and we heard he has joined God. We need God to intervene in this matter. That is uh, one prayer. Another one is, uh, Lord, let your promises for me and my family come to fulfill. Lord, bless the work of our hands. Let your glory shine again on, on me. Lord, break every yoke in my life. My maternal home and the life of my sister cause unity and oneness among the family who have made such prayers. And the Lord let all my desires be granted according to the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. They are all granted. Let all the promises of God on the uh, life of my family be realized. We have prayed for that and it is already up, about to spring up. Let God honor his word in my life. He, we, he has already begun to honor it. Lord, I ask for open doors, connection, favor, peace, a federal government job. We made the prayers like that yesterday, and you are included. And Lord, I ask for the bone of my bone, the, the, the will of God in my marriage. God should settle me this year all around. That will happen. God has the capacity. Uh, Lord, grant wisdom, understanding, and knowledge for me and my brothers. And then, and, and Lord, open my memory so that I can able to comprehend. Lord, I want to be the head and not the tail. These are the prayer points. Let's bring it before the Lord. Men ought was always to pray. And not to faint eternal Father, thank you, because the responsibility of praying lies without the coming and answering the, the prayers. The lies with you. So thank you very much because you have ear. You can see, you can read. So read through what we have there that is written. And then I hear the point that I've been raised. You say, call upon me in the dark trouble, I will answer you. And show you great and mighty things we should do not know. 
blessed Redeemer. We bring you into the matter and we receive answer from God of glory. Thank you, my Father. We shall have testimony to the end that God will be glorified in the name of Jesus. Again, together, let us bring this. Uh, let's bring this uh, prayer request before the Lord. All the old prayer requests we have made, let's bring all of them again. And um, thank the Lord for the ones he has answered. Father, we thank you because of uh, in the heap of this prayer request that have come this period, some of them you have already answered. And then and there are some that are still waiting. We want to remind you that we are still waiting for you to grant the answers to each. In the name of Jesus, the ones uh, that are outstanding, we are waiting and we are sure that shortly it will be processed and we shall receive them. Because you say, whatever we ask in the name of Jesus will be granted unto us. So in the name of Jesus, we will receive answer to all of this prayer. We present it before the Almighty God and we receive answer to these prayers. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father Almighty. Blessed Redeemer and those of them, Lord, in glory that have not been able to send in their prayer request. This morning, my Father and my God, as they have their prayer request in their mind, as I lift up this prayer request, Lord, together we lift up their, the, the prayer request in their mind, on their tables, before the Lord of glory, and we ask the Lord to look through, read through, and grant the answers shortly, so that we can glorify you. Father, remember that praise waited for you in Zion. Praise is waiting for you in your house, and it will only come as you do what you have said. Be thou glorified and magnified. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now we take our uh, hymn for today. In 150, we are taking only stanza uh, 1 and 2. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arm, what a blessedness, what a peace is mine. Leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, how bright the path grow from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arm. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. And grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Good morning. Go and lean on the everlasting arms.